Here we are today in the beautiful surroundings of the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew, just outside London. The venue boasts the world's largest collection of plants, with over 30,000 different kinds on display. It's also a world-leading plant science organization. So what better place to talk about natural and organic cosmetic ingredients? To do just that, I'm joined today by Dr. Barbara Olioso, a green chemist and the founder of Organatural. Today, Barbara will be shedding some light on this booming natural and organic sector and revealing some of her expertise. I'm in the middle of this controversy every day, so I'm very much familiar with all the problems that this causes, and I believe at the root uh, cause is the lack of definition of what natural organic is. You go for something very simple like a natural essential oil or a vegetable oil to natural uh, ingredients that are chemically modified. So how do we define if these are still natural? There are organic uh, certification bodies that have their own standards and their interpretation and they all differ. And this causes confusion in the first place within the industry. There is also the lack of the legal definition of what natural and organic is. So what happens is that the market is flooded with so-called natural cosmetics that can contain just a tiny amount, such as 1% of a natural ingredient, to be called natural. So consumers end up buying and using products that are synthetically based, thinking they're totally natural. And this causes unrealistic expectations for natural. The look and feel is totally unrealistic. Actually, I have one for the consumers that are after truly authentic natural organic cosmetics. And my suggestion is go beyond the natural organic story or the appearance and look and feel of the product and read the ingredients list. For example, this product only talks about argan oil, but in reality is full of silicones. My recommendation for cosmetic formulators that are bred for a natural and organic product is to learn to manage the expectations of your, bo of your boss or your client. For example, lately I was given as a brief um, this hero ingredient, which is a beautiful flower extract and also very powerful. Now, this has a strong color and this will affect the appearance of your finished product. In fact, the final result was this lovely uh, yellow color. But the client didn't like that. And the reason was that not because the product didn't perform well at all, actually on the contrary it was very good, but because the consumers were scared about the color. So to resolve it I had to explain to the client that this raw material had a strong color and the color went with the activity of the actual raw material. So we've been working on diluting the color but of course there is a compromise with that. So it's very important at the beginning of a new project that you brief uh, your boss or your client with the look and appearance of the raw materials they want to use in their development. I believe there will be a higher and higher demand for naturals and this will put more pressure on the environment. So I believe the future is natural and sustainable. How do we meet our need for nature and nature's needs? Uh, Kew Gardens is a great example because here a lot of plants are protected and biodiversity is promoted. I also believe that green chemistry will play a major role in uh, the future of natural organic cosmetics uh, by developing biodegradable ingredients with high performance.